Hello and welcome to Stotch Ross Maths key skill video on identifying expressions that represent a multiple of an integer. Now in the previous video we saw when we could guarantee that an algebraic expression was either odd or even. And for example to show something was even we could just show that it was two times some integer two times some whole number because two times anything is always going to give you an even number like two times three is six which is even two times four is eight which is even two times anything is guaranteed to be even but another way of saying even is that it's a multiple of two so anything that's even is a multiple of two and in a similar way we could use this same kind of form here to show that some expression is a multiple of some other number. So if, for example, we wanted to show that an expression is a multiple of 3 for all n, a multiple of 3 is going to be 3 times some expression, which we might want to put in brackets, and where that expression here, again, is going to be an integer, because 3 times any whole number will be a multiple of 3. So 2 times n could that be written as 3 times something? Well, no, there's no 3 that we could factorise out. This could be a multiple of 3. If I try different numbers, let's say that n is 1, then 2 times 1 is 2, which is not a multiple of 3. If I try n is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, which is not a multiple of 3. But if I did n is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, which is a multiple of 3. So it basically depends, but because we can't factorise out a 3 from this expression, we can't guarantee that it's going to be a multiple 3 regardless of what value of n we choose. It's only going to be a multiple 3 for certain values of n. That's not good enough. What about this though? 3 times something? Well, yes, we've got a factor 3 there, so that will definitely be a multiple 3. 3 times any whole number is guaranteed to be a multiple 3. What about the next one? 3n plus 1? Well, we can't factorise a 3 out here because we can factorise a 3 out here, but we can't factorise a 3 out here. So we can't take that factor 3 out. It's not guaranteed to be a multiple 3. In fact, it's never going to be a multiple 3 because we know that 3n is a multiple 3. And if we add 1, it's always going to be 1 more than a multiple 3, like 10, for example. That's 1 more than 9, which is a multiple 3. So this is guaranteed to not be a multiple 3. So that's kind of a strongest statement there. So no, that one doesn't match. 6n plus 9, can we factorise out a 3? Well, yes, we can. We could factorise a 3 and do 3 times what is 6n, what's 2n, and 3 times what is 9, it's 3. And because it's 3 times... A whole number expression because whatever whole number we put in for n 2n plus 3 will be a whole number as well this is guaranteed to be a multiple 3 we managed to factorize the 3 out what about the next one can we factorize the 3 out here well let's expand out first so 12 times 8 is 96 n plus 120 minus 6 so that's 96 n plus 114 and we can factorise a 3 out of that. So 3 times what is 96n? Well, it's 32n. And 3 times what is 114? Now I'm going to be lazy and do it on my calculator. It's 38. So that's 3 times something. So this is guaranteed to be a multiple 3. And the final one, we can use our common sense for this. 6n squared, well, 6 is a multiple 3. Anything times by 6 will be a multiple 3. So that's a multiple 3. This is a multiple 3. 3n is clearly a multiple 3. So 6n squared plus 3n is going to be a multiple 3 because a multiple 3 plus a multiple 3 is still a multiple 3. But we're then adding a number which is not a multiple 3. So overall, the number is not going to be a multiple of 3. So in general, if you have a multiple 3 plus a multiple 3, it's still a multiple 3. But if you have a multiple 3 plus something which is not a multiple 3, then overall you get something which is not going to be a multiple 3.